Hi green lovers! Squash plants tend to be a little bit tricky when it comes to seed saving because they cross pollinate so easily and you never know what you're going to get if you just let them do their thing. So what ends up happening is if you save seeds, the next generation could potentially be some kind of a franken squash that is some mixture of the parents that went into creating the new plant. So in this video, I am going to show you a really neat trick on how you can save seeds to ensure that the next generation of squash plants is true to parent. Coming right up. Well, I have a goal this year to save more seeds because the last year with the pandemic has been pretty stressful on seed companies being able to, you know, have their supply chain provide them with seeds to supply all the new customers that are growing uh, vegetables, vegetable gardens at home, which is absolutely fantastic. That has resulted in us not being able to get all the seeds that we like in a timely manner. And so this year I'm going to be saving more seeds and it's just a really good practice to learn to save seeds from the plants that you grow in your garden because number one, it'll save you money. Number two, the plants also tend to acclimatize to your microclimate over the course of the years. So if you save seeds and if you use the plants that are growing really well to save seeds, and if you take those seeds and grow plants and then save the best of those, you know, eventually you have plants that will grow really, really nicely in your microclimate. So save seeds, it's a good practice. So I'm out here at six in the morning and this is way before any of the pollinators are out except the ants. That's the only exception. I don't have to worry about those. But if I go down here to the squash plant, you can see right next to each other, actually, coincidentally, I've got a female flower. And you can tell a female flower because it's got the shape of the fruit that's starting to form right behind it. And I've got a male flower right there, right next to it. It's got a straight up stem. It does not have any fruit at the base of it. So that's how you tell the difference between the male and the female flower. Now, this female flower is just opening. And this is the perfect time, or even the previous night, if you can do that, to seal it up after pollinating it. Now the reason why you might want to seal it up the previous night is because you want to guarantee that when you come out here there haven't been any pollinators that have been visiting before you woke up in the morning. So when you seal it the previous night you give yourself a little bit of time so that you can come out here at your leisure but as early in the morning as possible to get those flowers pollinated. Now it is a little bit tricky to know the difference between a flower that is about to open versus a flower that is past its prime that has opened already. So let me show you how that's done. Now the way that you can tell between a flower that's just opening up versus a flower that's past its prime is if you look at this flower, the petals are nice and crisp. But right next to it you've got a flower that opened yesterday and yeah, you can actually tell by feeling it and even by looking at it, the petals are all kind of loose and limp. So that's the easiest way to tell the difference between a flower that's just about to open and a flower that's already open. Now, if you do it the previous night, you will not be able to pollinate it because the male flowers will not be open. There's a very short window that they open and that's early in the morning to, depending on where you are, where I am, it's probably around 11 in the morning on noon. That's the only window I have when these flowers are open and beautiful like this and inviting to the bees. So here's the male flower. There's the stem. And I'm going to peel off the petals just to be able to get more access to that pollen. So here we go. This is the male flower in focus. And you can see all those pollen grains. Some of them are around the base here as well. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this male flower and get it in there to the female flower. I'll try to do this my best one-handed. And just kind of rub it around 
on that pistil. Rub the stamen on the female pistil, the stigma. And that's it. Now the female flower is fertilized. So I'm going to go ahead and seal the top of it with this little kitchen tie that I've got here. You can use masking tape as well to seal it. So there we are, all nice and sealed up. And this fruit that's going to form now is going to be true to parent and you should be able to save seeds from it for the next generation. I hope you learned something new from this video, folks, and I hope you try this method. Seed saving is something that I believe very strongly in, and I hope you give it a try. And if you would be so kind as to hit that like button, I sure would appreciate it. It would get this video around more on YouTube. And yeah, share the knowledge. Until next time, live green and love your greens.